Rappin' with Reef Bum is sponsored by Polo Reef and Champion Lighting and Supply. Um, I don't know if anybody has an answer to this question from uh, Spin Sanity, but has there been any more conclusive evidence that brown jelly disease is caused by Archibacter and that Cipro can treat it? This was a hypothesis from Aquabiomics around 2020. Any thoughts on that? Or? I don't know if it's on my head. I don't know, Salem or, or um, yeah. Yeah, I will say sorry, Eli. I do not buy it. Um, so basically, you know, I think that we probably need to leave behind the idea of a one pathogen, one disease model when it comes to coral. Yes. Yes. And I think yes. that like 100%. Raiden has said, yes. um, the best model that we can think of is one like C. diff. That is most likely what's occurring to where we have, we have to think of this from an ecological standpoint, that's what it is. So there is a disruption in that ecosystem and something takes advantage of that. And some things in the environment can cause a disruption. One of the big ones I've been screaming about is high levels of dissolved organic carbon, labile dissolved organic carbon. Um, that's just one example. Um, also, you know, low levels of oxygen can shift the viral communities. There's a lot of these different chemical parameters that will then change that ecosystem. And a lot of the good guys really don't like that instability and guys that are really tough come in and take advantage of that. So brown jelly disease, the Arcobacter has been seen with 16S data in many cases of it. But if anything, I would say it could potentially act as something like a keystone pathogen. If that's the only potential um, argument I could see for that to where it comes in and induces some kind of bad gene expression and some other people and gets them all it's like a, someone coming in and organizing an army and they all get kind of mad and it causes the coral to go down. And this is a similar model to what's being explored with um, either white band disease or Sony coral tissue loss disease. I can't remember which one of the Caribbean right now, but that's the, it's, it's still a consortium. It's still a pathogenic microbiome that emerges. And I, I think that that's what we're dealing with here is instability leads to that. And it's also, you know, it's not going to be one size fits all because I've seen some data with brown jelly and things that do not have Arcobacter. Obviously, there's many bad players, Vibrios, Brutobacteriaceae, Flavobacter, etc. But they all have the one thing in common, which is they tend to be copiotrophic and they tend to have the ability to have pathogenic gene expression, which is which can be turned on and off based on the environment. So that's the real thing is there's no ba bad bacteria until there are. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> oh, well said. That's that's a good one. I'm totally gonna borrow that. Yeah. But the uh, there's uh yeah. So Salem, that that was truly beautifully put. Uh, I think to bring it back to a point we were we were talking about before, um, one of the reasons why I'm comfortable going broad here, especially if we have a disease emphasis, is because we are able with the kind of sequencing methods we're developing and using to look at specific pathogenic genes versus the species they're in we can form this hypothesis of like, hey, you sent us, 10 of you sent brown jelly. We found it all had the same like weird type six secretion system, but it's mm -hmm. found in five different you know, species or strains. That'll be the kind of thing we can get at. Um, yeah, anyway, that's, so that's, so Salem, yeah. that's, that's a wonder, very, very good point. And I, I like the Jekyll Hyde thing, that's spectacular. But yeah, it's about gene expression and what genes are expressed, and many of those things can be conserved, which also gets to how does this transfer over to the wild? Likely those same genes that are virulent that are being expressed is how coral disease happens in the wild too. So in my mind, mm -hmm. that's really the holy grail chunk of data that I'm really excited mm -hmm. about with this project is maybe we figure out that those types of mechanisms, and that gives us a much more universal look at coral disease than really any study has looked at thus far, even in the literature. Hmm.